Hello again. It's your friendly heavy physics teacher here. This time for the Regents Physics class, we're going to be doing Unit 9, Lesson 8. This is the last lesson in this particular unit. Circuit applications. And what I mean by that is um, devices that don't actually uh, affect the circuit directly, but have an impact on the circuit, like fuses, circuit breakers, ammeters, voltmeters, and a thing called a GFI, or ground fault interrupter. And we're going to be looking at how those um, interact with the circuit and, and how we use them in circuits for particular purposes, thus circuit applications. All right, here we go. First off, the safety device, okay? The circuit breaker and the fuse are two safety devices that we use to protect circuits from I, <laughs> my lovely wife, um, to protect circuits from too much current, okay? Fuses. Fuses are devices designed to melt when a certain amount of current flows through them, okay? They are quite physically pretty fragile when it comes down to it. Uh, a certain current flows through, that heats up the element of the fuse enough that it causes that part of the fuse to melt and thus become disconnected, and so no more current can flow through the fuse. Circuit breaker, okay? A circuit breaker essentially does the same thing, except that it's a switch. It's a device designed to switch off when a current flow reaches a certain number. That's why fuses and circuit breakers are always rated by the amps that the maximum amps that can flow through them. You can have a five amp fuse, you can have a 20 amp fuse, you could have a hundred amp fuse if you wanted to. Um, in very uh, delicate uh, devices, sometimes there's um, really fine fuses uh, that are rated at half an amp or a quarter of an amp because um, you need them to shut off really quickly if the current spikes. Uh, flowing into the, the circuit. Circuit breakers are great in that you can reset them. But if you've blown the circuit breaker, you need to disconnect stuff. You need to turn stuff off. Yes, okay, it's already off, but you got to pull it out of the wall and stuff. Reset your circuit breaker and then start adding stuff back in. And then once you get to a certain level, you can say, oh, if I add one more thing, the circuit breaker is going to blow. All right. Think because these are all protecting from too much current. Well, that's everything's connected in parallel. So as you add more things in parallel, the current goes up. Both of them, both of them must be connected in series to what they protect. Why? Because they're controlling current. Okay. All right. Meters. We have two types of meters that we've been using, and why have we had to connect them in the particular manner that we did? Okay, a voltmeter, or no, excuse me, an ammeter. All right, ammeter measures the amount of current flowing in a particular path in a circuit. Okay, so because it's measuring current, it must be connected in series with what it's measuring. It also must have a very low resistance compared to what it's measuring. The symbol for it is uh, a circle with an A that's in the line of whatever it's um, measuring. Okay, so um, the reason it has to have a very low resistance is twofold. One, if I put something in series, what happens to the effective resistance of that line? Well, it increases, okay? Because in series, the more loads you add in series, the higher the effective resistance. So if it has a very, very, very low resistance, we're talking on the order of half an ohm or lower, half an ohm or lower for uh, good ammeters. If they have that sort of resistance, then their effect on most resistors, most resistive loads, is very small, okay? And so they don't 
create a big change in the circuit. They're being in series, being connected in series. If you connect them in parallel, you burn out the ammeter because of that. Okay? Voltmeters. A voltmeter, obviously by its name, is measuring voltage. Okay? Another name for voltage is potential difference. Okay? So a voltmeter is a device that measures the potential difference across a branch or a load in a circuit. Therefore, it must be connected in parallel because it's measuring voltage. Whatever it's in parallel with is experiencing the same voltage as the voltmeter. So the voltage, voltmeter is actually measuring its own voltage. Okay, um, It must have a very, very, very high resistance compared to what it's measuring. Again, uh, the higher the resistance that it has compared to what it's measuring, the closer the branch effective current created by this branch is the resistance of what it's measuring, okay? Do it, do a calculation on your own, all right? Take 1 million ohms and 10 ohms and connect them in parallel and do the effective resistance equation. I bet you come up with a number that is very, very, very close to 10 ohms, all right? 1 million ohms in parallel to 10 ohms. Calculate it out on your own, okay? And see what happens to the effective resistance there. Okay, um, I'm going to put this up, and you need to pause the video when you do so that you can write down, you can write down this uh, diagram, okay? And then we'll be referring to this diagram during our teleconference, all right? Now, what the diagram represents, we've got one, two, three, four, five resistors, and each of the circled numbers represents places where we could put an ammeter or a voltmeter or something like that, okay? So please pause, write the, um, Write this circuit down on your own paper so that we can refer to it during the teleconference. So I don't have to stand here asking questions and, and use up time on this. Okay? Finally, a ground fault interrupter. All right? These are interesting devices. If you look at, in your bathroom is where they're normally located. But if you have outlets around your sink in the kitchen, they're going to have one of these on it. Uh, I know that hair dryers tend to have one on it. I think uh, hair straighteners also have one of these on them. A ground fault interrupter. All right. Ground fault interrupter, it's a device that compares the current flowing out of it to the current flowing back through it. In other words, it flows out into wherever it is going to be used. And then the current obviously has to come back because it's a circuit. And if the current flowing out of the device doesn't equal the current flowing back into the device, the device shuts off. Okay? What that what is a ground fault? Give me a moment. All righty, here we go. Here we have a typical house. All right? And someone is taking their shower in this typical house and they are listening to their music while they're in the shower. They have some sort of device, whatever device that they are using in the shower. Now, a ground fault is this. A ground fault is any pathway that electricity would normally, that electricity would take to zero electric potential other than the intended path it was supposed to. So normally, electricity comes from the power pole over here, all right, and it comes in through the green line and goes to outlets in the house, in this case, the outlet in the bathroom, okay? Then it'll go into the device and then out through the red line, back out, and the circuit 
is then complete because this goes back to the power company, all right? Whoever happens to be delivering the energy, all right? So the ground fault happens if there were another pathway that the current could flow here into the earth, into the ground. The earth is always considered a zero electric potential. And so that's why if you are in a car that has a uh, power line across it, the power line doesn't have to be connected to the ground. The tires are actually insulating the car from the ground. But if you step out of the car while the power line is on the car, there is a difference in electric potential between you, the car, and the ground. And that's why uh, you can get electrocuted in that situation. Electric fences. One of the wires on the electric fence is positively charged. Cow runs into it. The cow now creates a path between that positively charged wire and the ground, and that's why it receives a jolt, okay? So here we are. We have a person sitting in the shower. They're singing along to the song, and all of a sudden the song comes on on the device that they don't like anymore. So they're going to reach out. They're going to attempt to uh, skip the song to another one that they like or maybe change their playlist or whatever, and they grab the device, but the device was charging. And the charge cord was frayed. And so now they are grabbing onto the device and they are creating a pathway other than the red line, other than the return line. Because, hey, they got soap on their hand. They've got water running down their body. And that creates a pathway that goes to ground other than the one that's supposed to happen in the wires. So now they've created a ground fault. Here's the issue. You've got a circuit breaker box down in your basement. This circuit breaker box, normally the, the average circuit breaker that's in a circuit breaker box is 10 ohms-ish. Sometimes they're 20, sometimes they're 15, depending on the number of connections that would probably be made to that particular home, uh, room or line in the home, okay? So you grab onto, or whoever grabs onto their, their electronic device in the shower and creates the pathway. Their resistance is high enough that at 120 volts, maybe only one or two amps of current flows through them. The circuit breaker is rated for 10 amps, one to two amps flowing through or across your body. Is that going to trip the circuit breaker down here? No. All right. So one or two amps, though, going across your chest, going down your body, going through your body, you're you're fried. All right. Your your goose is cooked. All right. Or in this case, your human is cooked. All right. So the circuit breaker done down there doesn't protect you in that instance. So what you need is a device that says, okay, we've got two amps of current flowing out. I got two amps of current coming back. Everything's good. I don't have to worry. I've got two amps of current flowing out. Now I don't have any coming back. Shut off. That's what the ground fault interrupter does, is it shuts off when the current flowing out through it doesn't match the current coming back through it. Okay. And that's why it's important to have around any place where there's water in your home or any place where a ground fault could be created through an interaction with the electrical device. Okay? Okay, so there we have it. Last lesson in the unit. Uh, circuit applications. Ammeter. Measures. Current. Voltmeter measures potential difference, aka, AKA voltage, excuse me. Um, fuses, circuit breakers are protecting from too much what? Current. So they need to be connected how? Series. Okay. 
Ground fault interrupter is a special device that's comparing the current that flows out of it to the current that flows back into it. And if those don't match, it shuts off. All right. Um, we'll deal with some stuff during the teleconference. Please be looking for my emails to you. Okay. Hopefully everybody's staying healthy and we'll see you next time uh, in our adventures during the COVID-19 outbreak of 2020.